Hi all, welcome to week three of our On a Break Crossbody by Sincerely Jen Patterns. Today we'll be going over how to do this back pocket and we'll be installing the zipper and next week will be our final assembly. So this week is steps 20 through 33. The first thing that I wanted to go over was the pocket on the front. I mentioned in one of my videos that I was trying to eliminate the pleats and do a elastic right here so that it was a little bit more masculine looking and my attempt last week failed but here's where I am on it this week and I wanted to show it to you before I get too far but what I've done here is cut myself a piece a pattern piece and the pattern has you remember last week we folded the piece in by two inches on the sides so we had to fold this side in and back out well that eliminates two inches from your pocket by doing the pleat so I've taken my pattern piece and folded it in two inches and then on a new sheet of paper traced out so trace out the bottom and then this curve because we won't be doing the pleat so I traced the bottom and then part of the curve and then opened the piece all the way out and lined it up with that bottom line I made and marked the top and then drew a line from the top all the way to meet at the bottom and I'll show you the completed piece that I got and it's right here it looks like a really funny piece but it eliminates the two inches at the bottom and it stays the same at the top so that we can use elastic to gather it at the top. And that's what it ends up looking like. So I've cut out two pieces, a lining and a main, and sewn them right sides together with quarter inch seam allowance, done a casing about half an inch down and I've threaded my elastic through. So I wanted to show you this before I get too far. So here's my elastic sewn through. Let me go through those steps one more time. I, I don't want to go too fast for you. So I cut the pattern piece, my funky pattern piece, with um, right sides together. I cut my pattern piece and then sewed two pieces right sides together at quarter inch seam allowance. Flipped them right side out so that my wrong sides were together and then sewed a casing 3 8 inch to a half an inch down. I just wanted it to be wide enough for my quarter inch elastic and my little polar thing has this kind of big thing on it. So I usually make it a little bit bigger casing for mine, but whatever you use to pull your elastic through, just make sure it'll fit through the hole. So I think I did about a half an inch casing here. It won't make a huge difference, just so your elastic goes through. My elastic is 8 inches long. And now that I have it through, I'm going to tack it on this end. I don't want to lose it in my casing, so I'm going to tack it here. Okay. And then I need to obviously finish off these edges. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to flip it and sew these three edges right sides together. using a quarter inch seam allowance here. It may end up bigger than the original. We'll see. It's an experiment. Bigger pocket. Not necessarily a bad thing, right? to leave a turning hole at the end so let me rip that real quick okay so I got a turning hole now I did it about three inches wide and so I'll flip this right side out 
And I didn't interface this one. I, I would if I was doing it for real. So do interface it with some woven interfacing. And this is what we end up with. So poke it out a little more so you can see. What we would do here is just top stitch it on like we do in the original. You wanna turn your turning hole to the inside. Clip that so we can see better. So here's our little pocket and I'll line it up with the original so you can compare. Here's the original and here's the new one. It is slightly wider. So when we top stitch, probably bring it in a little bit so that our elastic can open up like that. And then obviously you need to put your magnet on before you do that. Okay, so that's what it would look like. It actually, it just eliminates the pleats. You can't even see the elastic until you open this up. So that's how I would do it if, for a more manly look. Or you could even eliminate the flap and just have the elastic front. So that would work too. Anyway, I hope that helped. I hope it's an option for you. Let's go ahead and start with step 20 on the bag we are working on. So the first thing we're going to do is use our back panel. And this one should have your fleece on the back. And we'll be installing our magnet again. So we'll fold this in half. The instructions for how to install the magnets, the magnet snaps, snaps were in the second video. So if you need a full refresher, go ahead and look at that video and it will show you how to do the magnet snaps. But I'm going to go install my, let's see, I guess it would be the female end of the magnet snap on my main panel. And then you also want to install your male end of your snap onto the bottom main. So this one's a little shorter, you can see. And how this will look is this will be on the back. Your, your exterior fabric will be on the back. And then this will actually be like this toward it. So it's the inside of the pocket in this case. So just make sure your main one doesn't have the snap because it'll be on the outside. So you actually want to install your snap on a lining piece and then on your back main piece. So go ahead and install your snap. If you need some extra help, um, the video instructions are in uh, the week two video. So I'll go do that, I'll be right back. Okay, so we've installed our magnetic snaps here. I have the female end on the main piece. It's a little bit longer, or taller than our lining piece, which has the male end on it. And these should match up pretty close when you snap them in together. And you have, I think it's a half inch seam allowance on here. So as long as you're within that half inch, you'll be okay. The next part is to finish off this pocket. So we take our lining piece and put it right sides together with our exterior piece, the same size. So this is the bottom part the bottom main panel and we'll sew these together with half inch seam allowance. And then we actually trim this one down to quarter inch. So we'll do that really quickly. Okay, so we'll cut this across the top. And then we'll flip it. So when we do this, I like to press it the seam one way so you get a nice press on one side and then kind of flip the seam to the other side and press the other way so you can turn it 
right side out and that line will be right on the top. See how it's right on the top there? Just makes it a little bit more crisp. And then we'll top stitch this. out for that magnetic snap there. It's kind of close. All right, so that's our pocket. And now we want to take our larger pocket and attach the magnet. And they should line up right at the bottom. So we'll be basting this. Make sure it's all lined up nicely before you baste. It's a lot easier to do our final construction when pieces are basted together. It's less to mess with. You can do this at a larger stitch length if you want. Side pocket done. The next part is we'll do the inside lining. So you want to grab your other lining, well there's two of them, your inside lining pieces, but you only need one for right now. And we'll be installing a zipper in it. So take one of your interior zipper pieces and we'll be putting these on top of each other, right sides together, and drawing a box. So the first thing we want is to draw a box on this piece. We need to go an inch down. So I usually use my clear ruler so I can see what I'm doing here. So we go an inch down and an inch in from each side. So we start at the one inch and go down to the eight inch here, it should be a seven inch line. And then we'll move down by half an inch. And do the same thing, draw another seven inch line. Okay, and then we connect these. Boy, that seems big. Well, that's half an inch, okay. It's always good to double check yourself if you feel like something's off. So the next part is to sew these together. We want to sew down by an inch as well. So we'll measure down an inch and lay our pocket right there and make sure we're centered here as well on each side. So what we do now, you can just lay it on here. You don't really need to pin it or anything. It stays pretty well. We'll sew around this box with a small stitch length. You want a small stitch length because we turn through this hole and you don't want to accidentally rip that stitch. So the next part, we need to cut this box open. So I'll draw a line of where you should cut. So we will be cutting all the way down the middle and then at the end we'll make little V's. Ignore this straight one, that was from my sewing and I didn't quite get right on it there. It's okay though. And then you'll do a V at each end. So we'll cut that open. This is where we'll be putting our interior zipper. So we just cut right along the middle. And then about half an inch from the end, we cut a V here. Cut to the stitching, but do not cut through it. I did that one time and I was sorry. <laughs> cut another V at the other end. And then 
we'll flip our pocket through the hole. Gotten it to lay really nice here, and I didn't iron it actually. This is our Pixie Fuse light that we'll be getting soon, and it lays just fine without any ironing. And we've also put double-sided tape on each side of our zipper. I like the double-sided tape because it really helps our zipper stay in place while we install it. And this doesn't show up in a lot of patterns. I'm not sure why. It's really a helpful tip. So we'll put our zipper down. You want your pull to be on the left side of your pocket. And then we'll just lay our pocket down on top, matching it up. You want to center it on those teeth. So you should be able to cover up your double-sided tape and it should lay pretty well on there. All right, and then we'll just sew around this. And I like to start on one side with my zipper pull out of the way and just deal with my pull later. seam allowance on this and you can lift your foot and move that zipper pull if you need to. Don't forget to pivot at the sides. You can leave your needle down, your foot up and pivot around. piece at the front end here. You don't want to accidentally hit that one either. You can definitely bend or break a needle on that. Alright, so there we are. Our little zipper all installed. Again, watch out for that metal piece on this end if you have one. And actually this is super long now so we can trim it off. And then we'll be putting our other pocket on top. So turn this over and we'll put the other pocket piece right sides down on top. Okay, and we'll sew around here. So we won't be sewing the bottom, we'll be sewing all of the other sides. So you want to make sure to tuck your pocket piece out of the way. I usually start at the bottom and go up since we're not sewing the bottom. I usually do about a quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. It actually doesn't say in the instructions. some extra support as we will be using this pocket to turn later and then you want to go ahead once you have your pocket all sewn up go ahead and unzip this because you don't want to forget later it's a good idea just to unzip it now all right now we'll be moving on to our zipper piece so we'll need our other zipper that we cut the 11 inch and we'll also need the zipper panels. So those are the long pieces that you cut from the cutting chart. And you want to put these each end in by half an inch. So we'll fold each one in by half an inch. Okay. 
And then I want to also work on our zipper. So we're folding all four of them in by half an inch. And then we'll take our zipper and on the front of your zipper, so we've talked about the front being this curved part and the back being the flat part. We want to open up the front a little bit and tuck it at a 90 degree angle to the side. And we'll also do the same with the other side. So make sure your bends are going the same way. It might be hard to see on black, but yeah, it's hard to see. But you want them to look the same on each side. You don't want to have one bend going one way and one going the other. Okay, so make sure you put them on top of each other the same way. And then we want to just baste this a little bit. Usually just go back and forth two or three times to get it basted. Okay, so it kind of looks like a fan at the end, like this. You want them nice and even, okay? All right, and now we'll take one of our zipper panels that we've folded down half an inch and put it on top of our zipper, but we'll be extending it past that curve a little bit. So just about half an inch here, and I'll pin that all the way down. And we'll be putting the lining one on as well, so you can do them both at the same time. You want to make sure that they match up at the end, you know, we folded them over so it might not be a perfect science, but you want to make sure that they match up. And then continue to pin all the way down. And when you get to the other end, make sure your ends are folded up again that they're nice and even. Okay. Now I have one just slightly longer. I'm going to fold that up just a little bit more. So here's what it looks like. And we'll be sewing this on with a quarter inch seam allowance. So you shouldn't need to put on your zipper foot just yet. You'll probably need to move your zipper pole out of the way. Maybe things have shifted a little bit. I think they're okay here. You want to make sure that they are nicely matched up. And then I like to backstitch here just to make sure. Alright, and we flip these the right way out. And press them well. Again, and we'll be top stitching all around all three edges. So we'll be doing each short edge and then the edge that's close to the zipper. You want to make sure you have them nicely pulled out so that your other side, the one not next to the zipper, 
the thicker is even as well. one side that looks like this and then we'll be doing the other side as well so again make sure that your sides not only match each other but they match the other side now and we'll be doing this side too We'll just sew the other side. I'll be right back while I do that since I just did it. Now we have both sides of our zipper on and you might be a little bit afraid to zip it all the way to the end but because of the curvature of your zipper end here it won't go off the end so don't worry about it. It will however go off this other end so we are going to fix that right now. You want to take your main zipper tab that we cut and we'll be doing both long raw edges into the center. So you'll fold both of those into the center and then the short ones in by half an inch. You can't iron this too, I'm just finger pressing it this time. Once we get it sewn on there it'll be okay. And then bring your two short ends together and this makes a zipper tab. You can decide which side you like better for the top and you just slide your zipper right into the opening and we can go, we don't have to go the full way, you can go about halfway and then we'll turn that on. Now we'll sew a square around the outside to hold that in place. I like to kind of tuck in those raw edges a little bit. I usually use these hemostats. And you want to be careful tucking them in, obviously. You don't want to over tuck and, and make your flat edge not flat anymore. So I do it carefully. a little bit there. Hmm, we can trim up these threads a little bit, but that's our zipper. Now we need to put it in. So now we have our zipper all assembled and you'll want to pay attention to having your zipper on the left side. We'll take our lining that has our pocket installed and I have my zipper unzipped already because we want to unzip it for the final construction so I just leave it unzipped so I don't forget. Lay your zipper on top of this one with your zipper facing up. Make sure that your zipper is facing up. This is different than, we, than we've done it in the past but on the lining part you want your zipper up. You'll notice I have holes because I did it wrong and I had to rip the whole thing. So put your zipper up. That's why I'm saying it so many times to remind myself. Okay, so we want to center this on this panel and we'll do a quarter inch seam allowance beasting stitch first. And because sometimes the machine has trouble going from the one layer up to your three layer here, it sometimes pushes it along. I usually use these and keep them even on there. So I just hold it in place and then we don't get that pushing along. You just want to keep these even here with the basting stitch. And then we take one of our top pieces that looks like this 
I know mine's bent down because, like I said, I already did this once and I messed it up. So we'll put this face down on top. You don't have to worry so much about the pushing this time. Because it's, it, it's covered a little bit. And this one we'll do at our 3 8 inch seam allowance. So we'll cover up those beasting lines that we had before. Line these up at the other end so it's even. And then we'll push the top up. Okay, leave the seam where it is. Your seam should face up toward the top and we'll push this up and then we'll top stitch this. Let me show you one more time. So the seam should be up. I'll show you from the end. The seam is up and the flap is up. And we'll do just a top stitch here. You wanna do the top stitch on this top part, not on your zipper side. So we have one and then we'll do the other side so you want to take your other lining that doesn't have your pocket and your zipper face up on top and this time your zipper pull will be on the right side make sure that your lining sides match up here and then obviously your zipper goes at the top and again we'll do a quarter inch basting stitch and I'll hold this in place one more time. Once you get the first couple stitches you don't need to hold it any longer just so it does those first couple stitches without pushing it along. inch seam allowance and then one more time we'll push the flap up So that's our lining. Today we completed the lining and our back zipper pocket with the magnet snap. Next week we'll be doing our final construction, so we're almost there. You can post a picture of these two things in the Facebook group for this week, and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye, everyone.